In the U.S., 4.4 million kids have been diagnosed with anxiety. 1.9 million kids have been diagnosed with depression. Kids living below the poverty line are affected more than others. And that's in a normal year. But 2020 has been anything but normal. Schools suddenly closed, going to parks became illegal, and hanging out with friends it was considered dangerous. And us kids are constantly reminded that we can get our teachers, parents, and grandparents really sick. But there's hope. There's always hope. And there's hope right here in West Dayton through a program called Neighborhood Kids. Neighborhood Kids program, one of the things that we knew after the pandemic that our kids was just at home doing nothing. The problem with doing nothing is something. I mean, the opposite of nothing is something. And in order to be successful, you have to do something. So we said we need to take a program to the house. Being it was a pandemic, we said we'll take the program to the house. We'll do social distancing. We'll take music. We'll take arts. We'll take literature. Uh, we took STEAM, STEM, and art, which is STEAM, and rites of passage actually to the home. So so it was no excuse. So we wake kids up in the morning, you come outside, you have it all right there. And so the parent who maybe had to work wouldn't have a problem because the program was actually done at their house. Just wanted to spend more time with the kids and COVID hit and there was a need for an educational component. And I found Marlon Shackelford and we joined together and over a phone conversation, created the idea that we would bring education to the kids' homes because that's what they needed was the face-to-face -face experience. Because most of our teachers are really the best. And we tell them that the education is the link to their success. And we expect teachers to be great. So we expect students to be greater. I agreed to be a part of it because my brother Marlon called me. And when he calls, I answer the call. In whatever capacity, he says, I got a program. I got kids that need you. And I'm like, when and where? And I'm there. Reading is my passion by nature, so having the opportunity to work with these kids to help them get better at reading, writing, and math, it was it was great. I couldn't say no. There was no way to be like, nah, I'm not doing that. You can't you can't say no. And then once I met the kids, they were amazing. Cause I was thinking, you know, they don't know me. Here's some stranger coming to their house trying to tell me what to do, trying to help me with school. But they were very receptive. They looked forward to me coming. They were upset when I had to leave. I'm like, our hour is up. I gotta go. And they're like, are you coming back next week? So that kept me going week after week, like, because I knew they counted on me and they were excited to see me coming. So I'm like, yeah, I'm coming. I'll be here every week. Miss Nikki, she was a sweet person and she bought us like these little activity books for like the end of our program. And it's really fun. I do it every day. Yeah, I do it too. And um, she, she even bought us books to read. Yeah, like I like, I like her, I like her, um, her class because well her program because it's like it's fun and she really tells us about reading and she helps us like read it and learn and spell out the word correctly you know teachers give a lot of love and we fill a lot of gaps they needed that and each teacher in the program brought something different to the table to fill in another piece of the gap so for some of like our boys definitely they need to see a man they need to relate to a man. So that filled in a gap that I couldn't feel because I'm, I'm a female. And there are just certain things as a female I can't tell you, I can't teach you. And I'm okay with that because I can fill in these other gaps that a man can't fill in. So I think they definitely got that. They definitely got love. And they got some hugs and they got non-judgmental help. You know, I wasn't telling them, oh, you know, you're bad at this or you're, no, you just haven't learned that yet. There's a difference between not knowing and not knowing yet. And there's power in that word yet. So no, you can't multiply yet, but we'll get there. So by the time we finish, they had made gains from the reading assessments I gave them at the beginning to where we ended up at at the end. So then having the opportunity to work with them during the fall when school started, I'm like, what do you need? I would call the parents like, hey, when you get their computers, let me know. I'll be over. I will definitely be, be there to support them. They helped out, have gave me time to myself and spent time with my kids learning. I like the science because mm -hmm. when the day that he came over here with this um, microscope thing, mm -hmm. we um, grabbed a toothpick and then rubbed it on our jaw and then 
we took this piece of paper and then rubbed the toothpick on the paper and mm -hmm. then put it under the microscope and saw our cells. My name is Lewis Davis. Mm -hmm. I'm a science teacher at Dayton Public Schools, uh, primarily chemistry and physics. Um, I've been teaching for Dayton Public Schools for about 11 years. I'm currently at Thurgood Marshall STEM High School. And uh, beyond that, I, I like to serve my community in any capacity I can, um, but especially educational-wise and um, just community-wise, uh, bringing us together as one and celebrating each other and really becoming a community, you know, instead of just houses next to each other. Uh, it's important for me to be a part of the village to let uh, the children and the parents see that there are other people that are part of their community that are willing to put in work, and put in service, and love them. You know, and, and care for them and let them know that, they, that we are all in this together. So that's why it's important to, for me to be a part of this. Uh, basically, this program to me and my family means a lot as an immigrant, sorry, as a refugee who is new in the, you know, in the new culture. And of course, trying to bring my children, tell them of their past, telling them of where they are and having new people who have lived in here for longer than we have lived in. It's very, very important. I feel like it's a bridge mm -hmm. and a very great support for me as a parent mm -hmm. and these children and the atmosphere and all, you know, the culture they're living in. For now, of course, for the time they haven't been at school during this COVID-19, this means a lot they feel they're back in class. You know, just feeling like, oh, we're back in class. You can see how much they concentrated. They left everything from yesterday. Their mind was ready. Oh, we're going to be having another class. Like a one-on-one -on -one with the teacher was something that missed for long. So to me, I really feel it has revealed, you know, it has relieved them from the stress and the worries they've been having of when do they go back to school, meet their teachers physically. Art is a way for kids to release stress or to get out their feelings uh, through paper and through their hands. There's a difference between getting it out through your voice or through your hands. Mm -hmm. That's why they say the power in the written word. Yeah, yeah. yeah, art was how I learned how to write. That's something that I'm going to teach these kids. Mm -hmm. uh, most most kids learn how to write with script or or print. When I learned how to write, I learned how to write 3D letters first. So when I got to preschool, like a couple of these kids' ages, they told me to write my name, and I always did backwards S's, and they told my mom, he's dyslexic. Mm -hmm. Then when I got... They, they told her that she came to the school. She said, my son's not dyslexic. Tell him to write his name how he wants. It. So she, they said, Simeon, write your name. I wrote in bubble letters, Simeon. And then they said from that day, I'm not dyslexic. I'm gifted and talented. So that shifted my, the whole perspective of me and my intellect through art. Physical fitness is extremely important right now, especially for kids, just for the simple fact they've been isolated from their peers for so long, there's not enough movement and kinetic energy flowing through their body, so it's important to get up at least two or three times a day, 20 to 30 minutes, and physically move around, stretch out your muscles, do whatever it takes to get a positive uh, blood flow going. Benefits that it will provide for the kids would be uh, more so just alleviating stress, depression, anxiety, and just making your overall self-esteem boost. 97, 98, 99, 100. He was right. That did make me feel better. Along with getting up and moving around, you can also brighten your mood by playing in the dirt. Yup, I said playing in the dirt. Playing in the dirt brightens your mood and strengthens your immune system. Gardening is one of the best ways to get out there and get your hands dirty while growing something either beautiful or delicious. When you feel yourself getting into a slump, going outside and experiencing nature may just be what the doctors ordered. I met the kids at Learning Tree Farm. I would bring, so three years ago, the majority of the kids in the Neighborhood Kids program would come to Learning Tree Farm, where I am a substitute preschool teacher, and I work there. So every month, I would bring the kids out to Learning Tree Farm, and we would have a big meal, and we would go hiking, we would visit with the animals, and we would celebrate birthdays with cupcakes, and we would just have fun. And the importance of getting outside, to take your shoes off, to walk in the grass, to climb a tree if you have one in your neighborhood or in your, in near your yard, to walk around your house even, just to be outside, listen to the cicadas that we hear right now, listen to the birds, 
just for 10 minutes, even set your timer, can change the way the brain works, can calm our body and calm our brain so that we can get back to our online learning and all that. So far, we've learned that exercising and being outside in nature can have a positive effect on how we feel. But there are some other things we can do as well. Uh, in the Neighborhood Kids program, um, I do, um, we call it different things, one called the Circle of Trust, um, or otherwise known as mind-body work. Um, and so we do everything just from checking in, um, how are you feeling today, helping um, the youth identify their feelings um, and feel like they can trust themselves and one another to share and myself. Um, and then also learning different techniques, like self-soothing techniques, calming techniques, um, ways that they can, once again, with trust, right? So sometimes we feel things in our body, we feel feelings, and sometimes it feels like our body's betraying us. Mm. Like, why, why is all this stuff going on? Right. I don't like this. Right. Um, and so learning how to become friends with our feelings or understand our feelings um, and sit with them and breathe through them so that we can make decisions um, that allow us to trust ourselves. Right? Um, by acting out of intention instead of out of reaction. Um, what I'm doing is so important right now um, because so much is happening to young people. It's happening to kids and um, parents and other adults in their lives also have a lot going on and maybe don't have the time or the energy um, or the knowledge to sit down and give kids a chance to express themselves of how they're experiencing everything that's happening to them right now and maybe feelings of powerlessness and things like that. So not only is it important for them to be able to express themselves, but to be able to do something about it. And it's like, get, you do have power, you do have agency to change your experience, even if it's just within the realm of your body and your mind and your spirit. Um, you can control that, you can do things about that to have the experience that you want to have. Um, and then also kind of on a side note, uh, I, I taught the kids um, a couple weeks ago how to do hand massages. So like on a physical body, how to soothe. And now they're going to be on the online school. Uh, but even before online school, everyone's on their devices, you know, but now even more devices, right? More sitting, hands, stuff. So really letting that energy move through the body so it doesn't get stuck. Whether that energy is emotional energy, whether that's just like cramping, physical energy that's stuck. Um, I think it's really important that we let all that move, um, especially in a time when maybe they're not getting the extracurriculars, they're getting to play their sports, you know, run around the neighborhood. Um, I would say for parents right now, um, the power of even just expressing our feelings and our vulnerability is, is pretty huge because when we feel our feelings, um, especially if they're like fear, um, anxiety, like these things that maybe trigger that fight or flight response inside of us and we're feeling high stress, um, whether it's the, for the adult or the child, um, it actually turns off part of our brain. And so we're af operating from uh, survival, emotional parts of our brain, but the logical part of our brain that helps us kind of integrate our life experience and be able to keep moving forward, that part shuts off. And so even the act of asking myself, how do I feel right now? And thinking, what is the word to describe how I feel right now? And then speaking that, it turns back on that part of the brain so that we're operating from a full brain and then we have access to our full power and everything that we can offer us to move forward. Um, so even just that moment of like turning that part of the brain back on and then the, the vulnerability um, and the trust that becomes built between a parent and a child or a family uh, when you are able to be vulnerable and say, I'm scared too. It's okay. You know, and, and that vulnerability can go a long way um, in building that trust and relationship between adults and kids. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just playing a virtual instrument and taking care of my emotional wellness. Yep, there's an app for that. Hello, my name is Darren Bell, president of Restorative Justice Arts and also the creative developer and designer of the My Music Ed interactive social, emotional, and music learning app. Okay, Restorative Justice Arts, um, one half of our company, is an area that focuses on training educators, teachers, students, 
community leaders, faith-based organizations, and restorative practices. Uh, the simple version of that are circle trainings where you can have safe conversations, um, whether it's a negative community thing happening, a positive community thing happening. It's just basically a safe space for conversations to get into the why in hopes of sustaining um, positive output on the end. When it comes to dealing with the My Music Ed app, that's the app that we designed in 2015 that allows students to work either on site or virtually playing drums, piano, games. But what's integrated in our curriculum is a social emotional therapeutic component designed by our staff therapists. With that being said, one good example is before you play the virtual drums online or before you play the virtual piano uh, in an e-learning classroom, you can do a calming down technique. There are things you can do with your hands like left hand up, right hand up, both hands on your tummy, breathe in, breathe out, calm down. Now we're starting from a point of calm. But imagine learning that in a music class and then that translate over into an academic class, those same therapeutic those same social emotional learning integrated um, content that makes a difference when it comes to learning because the, the instruments connect the young people that's why we love teaching them but we're also teaching them SEL components about being calm and being um, excited about learning academically too it's so important um, having uh, I believe our program during COVID because of the opportunity it can be used virtually what does that look like you can actually go to mymusiced.com with the username and password, the first thing you get is SEL. So when it comes to youth mental health, you get um, SEL components, SEL being social emotional learning, de-stressing things, uh, things to do when you're excited, relationship building things, all while you're having fun playing music at the same time. So um, if you happen to hear that there aren't you know, arts components that can be done virtually, yes, you can play drums, you can play virtual piano, you can play virtual music games, but at the same time, once again, our app is built in with those SEL youth mental health components, so they're being taught it to work preventively before addressing something, if something negative happens after the fact. Introducing kids to music, art, and breathing techniques is great, but when it comes down to it, we need people who care about us. You know, oftentimes, because we're not having conversations with young people, and sometimes our parents don't understand how to have those conversations with people. Um, uh, I, I just appreciate resources um, that go out into the community and actually talk to families on how to talk about the pandemic. I think it's stressful for them, and it's mainly stressful not because they have too much information, but because they don't have enough. And, uh, and, and where we're able to explain, because they're going to hear you talk about it. They're going to hear you talk about the pandemic. They're going to hear you talk about death. They're going to hear you talk about people being sick. But we don't talk directly to them, and more importantly, uh, give them an opportunity to talk back. So I think that that's one way that they're definitely being uh, affected. But I think the other portion is, at times, they see one set of people being very safe, whatever we consider safe, whether it's wearing a mask or social distancing. But they see another set of people maybe not doing too much of that. Not doing too, kind of, you know, going on business as usual. Where if they're a part of, their, of that particular family, one of my concerns is that they're trying to navigate, well, they say, they're saying that this is safe to wear a mask. They're saying that this is safe to wear a mask. However, we're not wearing masks. Do we matter? Are people keeping us safe? And all that can be explained whether you agree with the mask or disagree with the mask, but young people have to be included on that uh, conversation. But they need human interaction. At bottom line, it's great for their mental health. We have to bring the services to them safely. They have to continue to be included in on services um, and, and normalcy. I think knowing that we're there for them, there's a sense of stability in an unstable time. There's so much going on that is unknown. When are we going back to school? When is COVID going to be over? What are the protocols? What do I do when I step out of my house? Is it safe to step out of my house? Who is it safe to be around? Who is it safe to be spending ex you know extended period of time with? How does school work? There's just so many unknowns. And when will it end? Um, with us, with neighborhood kids, they know a teacher is coming on this day at this time, and our teacher is going to have a thermometer and a mask, and they're going to make sure I have a mask, and they're going to make sure that we're distanced so that we're safe. And they're going to come to me and they're going to listen and they're going to teach me. And there's some stability in that. 
Yeah, I, um, Miss Jennifer, she one of the ones that you can call and be like, oh, she'll, oh, she'll call you. Hey, how you doing, guys? I was just checking up on you. I was just trying to see if anything's okay. And she was like, well, um, if you know anybody that need anything or anything like that, we have certain people that we like, I can look out for. I don't know. I just feel like everything is just closing in on me. Even if you just want to talk to her, you can just call and be like, hey, Miss Jennifer, I just needed somebody to talk to for a minute. I just need a little advice. You call and she be like, she might not give you the advice that she was looking for sometimes. And then she be like, well, if you do it like this and you do it like this, sometimes it'll be a good outcome, sometimes it don't. She be like, you just listen to her and be like, okay. Now I sit down and I count the 10 and I think about what she said and I be like, you know what? She was like, let me call these people back and apologize to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just me and her alone doing the program. Yeah, the program is it's, it's really fun and it's really, it really helps kids. Young people are very effective. They're resilient. But we kind of take that for granted, right? Because young people have to be, they have to be, we have to explain to them what's going on. You know, and oftentimes because they're, we're not having conversations with young people, and sometimes our parents don't understand how to have those conversations with people. Um, uh, I, I just appreciate resources um, that go out into the community and actually talk to families on how to talk about the pandemic. I think it's stressful for them, and it's mainly stressful not because they have too much information, but because they don't have enough. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and where we're able to explain, because they're going to hear you talk about it. They're going to hear you talk about the pandemic. They're going to hear you talk about death. They're going to hear you talk about people being sick. But we don't talk directly to them, and more importantly, uh, give them an opportunity to talk back. It's not always easy for us kids to express how we feel, and it's not always easy for parents to listen. So that's why we have resources right here in West Dayton. Um, Summit Village has been around since 2006, and we started out just doing things like, not just, but we started out doing things like uh, focus groups and support groups and uh, educations and training, and it kind of evolved into actually providing mental health counseling and therapy. So in 2013, we started providing billable services, but we don't turn anyone away based on their ability to pay. So we wanted to be right here in the heart of West Dayton where we can provide not only just mental health counseling and therapy and support services, but also programs for our youth. Um, we kind of started off with just the mental health aspect, but when we're talking to mental health, about mental health with families, you know, they, you got to think about food. You know, I can't come to you and talk to you about my depression, my anxiety, if I'm hungry or if I don't have any place to live if I'm stressed out because, because of whatever. So we started partnering with other organizations so that we could do addresses from a holistic standpoint. So we mar partnered with the Marketplace Movement Church um, for our food pantry. We partnered with GDPM for parenting classes. We partnered with Montgomery County Juvenile Courts for youth programs for kids who are coming out of um, uh, detention so that we can help bridge that gap. Um, so we've got couple programs going on that support our families you know in a holistic approach um, so have we seen an increase in need in mental health services because of the pandemic definitely we definitely definitely have um, not only with kids but especially with the parents um, so we get lots of calls wanting counseling and therapy but our community is really apprehensive about mental health counseling and therapy so we're looking at making more creative approaches like having support groups I think peer support groups and parents and families are more apt to come in and talk to people as a whole. So our calendar for October and November, well, you'll see more support groups. But we have definitely seen an increase in need. A lot of uh, behavior issues with kids and kids especially not being able to adapt to this um, online system that we have going on. Um, so there's a lot of need. And the only way we're going to be able to tackle something like that is as a group, as a, you know, as a whole community. But we want to be a part of that. You may be asking... What are some signs that parents can look for to know that their child needs services? Parents can look for these signs um, when you're talking about kids, especially anybody under the age of like 12. Um, kids are naturally friendly people. They want to get out and they want to mingle. The biggest clue I tell people to look for is isolation. If your child doesn't make friends very well or if your child prefers to be alone all the time, um, if your child is stopping doing some of the things that his favorite things, you know, we need to start talking to our kids about bullying. And, and you know, some people throw that word out there lightly because, they need, you know, use it as an excuse. But um, it's something that we really, really, really have to start taking a look at um, because that can damage a child's self-esteem, their emotions. And if, if we've already gone through trauma at home, then that just compounds it, you know, whatever they're going through in school. So that isolation, um, whether they're not eating or they're overeating. 
with, especially if they're not sleeping. If you get a kid that's not sleeping or all they want to do is sleep, just think about the extremes, you know. Um, so those are key things that you want to watch. And especially in school, if you see your child is academically not excelling like they should. And what I tell people, if you got to know child development. You know, you need to know what stage your child should be in or else whatever he's doing, he or she is doing, you're going to think it's normal. So you got to know the, the developmental stages. You got to work with the school. You got to work with your doc and you got to keep an eye on your kid, you know, and just know that this is not quite you know, what I would say is normal, None, you know, what is normal. But to me as a parent, I kind of get a clue that something is wrong and we need to pay attention to those cues, you know, and it's not like your child is damaged because they're not. It's just that something is going on that's affecting their mental health and we need to pay attention to it and get some help for it. Talking to your kid is the best thing in the world you can possibly do is have a conversation. So I, would, I, want, I encourage every parent to sit down and have a conversation with their kids every night before they go to bed. If it's just five minutes, how was your day? What's going on? Is it something happened? How did school go today? I ain't see you with your best friend. What's going on? You got to have that conversation with your kids. Got to have it. What I would say to kids of any age, especially anybody of any age, is that you have to know that you do have a voice. You know, what you say is important. Um, so if, and you, and you got to award yourself sometime, you know, and families and parents are extremely busy sometime or not always attentive to the needs of their kids. So what kids can do is award themselves. So I have my grandson, we created what we call the award board. Um, and my, my daughter's busy and she's got a lot going on. So we all stay together as a family and we have to do this from a multi-generational approach. Everybody has to be involved, wrap our arms around our kids. But this award board is something that the kids can get a, a poster board, I think we went to Walmart and bought a five dollar little look like a magnetic calendar or you can draw it up yourself. And then when they do uh, complete their assignments at school, they can give themselves a star. If they do write, read five books, they can give themselves two stars. So it's just like creating and this can be created not from a parent, but even a kid can bring it up and say, hey, I want to create this award board. Rewarding yourself and taking care of yourself up here and in here is very important. But, but during the pandemic, we also have to remember to take care of our health with frequent hand washing, mask wearing, social distancing, and healthy eating. Um, during the times of online schooling, it is very important that we continue monitoring what we put into our body. So we do have more time on our hands, and it's very important that what we eat does affect how we think. It affects the amount of energy that we have. and so making sure that we drink water instead of maybe a pop or a fruit juice, um, getting outside on a daily basis, even just for a little while, even if you just have a small grassy area or a tree to just spend that 10 to 15 minutes, even set a timer and get yourself to force yourself just to go outside for 15 minutes can change the way the brain works and can calm our bodies down so that we can re-engage with our education online. When it comes to mental illness, Malcolm X said it best. First, I'm going to start with the quote of Malcolm X. When, when I is replaced by we, then wellness begins. So one of the things I know about mental health, we're talking about whole minds, whole body, whole spirits, whole souls. That's the holistic approach. And sometimes you might have the mental part, but not the emotional part. You might have the spiritual part, but not the physical part. So when I talk to young people, they're always missing one of those parts. So we're saying that to be whole, to be holistic, right, to really deal with the wellness, you have to have mental, spiritual, emotional and physical. So if our kids don't have that, for instance, if they're missing the emotional part, they don't know how to bounce back. They don't have balance. So what we're basically saying is that you need the emotional, but you need the mental too. And you have to find that balance. So I'm seeing that the equilibrium is off if you don't have the balance, if you don't have that whole mind, whole spirit. There is hope through pandemic through political and social unrest, there is hope, hope for kids all over this country, especially right here in West Dayton. And in the words of Neighborhood Kids poet, A. Slate, I am enough. I, I am, am enough. enough. I am more than what you think of me. Ask me how I know. Because my thoughts, they help me see that I am the only extraordinary me 
I am a legend creating a legacy. And I believe in my destiny. And I believe in my destiny. Thank you.